Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Maxing You Podcast. And today we'll be talking to Richard Walsh, who is an author and mentor. He's going to help us navigate how we can best up-level our lives in business and relationships. Let's hear what he has to say. Hey guys, welcome to yet another episode of Maxing You Podcast. And we've got our guest on today, Richard Walsh, who is the best-selling author of Escape the Owner Prison. And his mission is to help business owners learn to escape the owner prison, just like the title of his book says. So welcome, Richard. How are you? I am outstanding. Thank you so much for having me on today. I really appreciate it. Oh, great. I'm happy to have you on. So my listeners know um, that I love to talk to people about sort of just life in general, how we can sort of better ourselves, be it in our business or in our lives. And I thought, you know, you are a great guest for helping us do that, especially getting into this this new year um, as we're starting to have our list of things that we want to improve, sort of just how we stick to them. So tell us a little bit about you. Okay. Yeah, I've been a, a business owner for 30 years now. So I've been in and out of different businesses, uh, some great successes and some tremendous failures. So I'm, I'm in that group. You know, if you haven't failed, you haven't tried. Okay. So people, you know, most people <laughs> yeah. know that, but you know, it's, it's just part of, part of the strategy. So, but over time, what happened was I had built this incredible business and then lots of success that went really well. Then the crash of 08, 09 came and it just wiped out my business. And it was kind of unusual for me because I was thinking, wow, I've got everything. And then it was gone. So I had to really reflect and look at like, well, what what happened? How, how can something that was so great be gone so fast? And I think a lot of people experience this. So I started looking at all these little things that I didn't do in my business and life in general, to be honest. You know, <laughs> a few things that, that go together and that that caused this collapse that it could have certainly weathered the storm if I had done those certain things. So I didn't want to repeat that. Started a couple other businesses, kind of had a, I moved, reinvented myself. I had six small children at the time, a wife. And so it was kind of traumatic, you know, to say the least, uh, but quite, quite a, quite a change. Uh, but then I, I realized as doing the next thing and started doing things right. Like I really want to help other people avoid those big mistakes. OK, because, again, little mistakes that up to the big ones. So I end up writing the book, Escape the Owner Prison, which is the contractor's new way to scale, regain control and fast track growth while loving life. Because the secret is you can grind and hustle and do all those cool little cliches that people have. And all you're going to end up being is your business, you know, and your life is not going to be balanced, um, which, again, is another cliche, the work life balance. But it's not really a, an equal balance. Right. You still have to work. But then how do you get the freedom to raise a family, to have kids, to be there for them, you know, be an influence on them, not just be the guy who left at four in the morning and came home at eight o'clock at night. You know, I didn't want to, I was that, I was that dad when my kids were young. And I realized that they didn't care. They didn't care if I had a business. They didn't care what kind of car I drove. They didn't care how many employees I had. All they cared about was me, you know, just being around. That was like the coolest thing. And that, that epiphany really helped make make that directional change for me. So I designed this way to do it. So I started really looking at what it takes to create a business that's self-sufficient. You can be the visionary, you can be that person who's driving the business, but you're not unlocking the door every day, turning on the computers, you know what I mean? Like you're doing everything for everybody, telling everyone what to do. And if you're not there, there's no business. You leave for two weeks and you come back and you spend the next two weeks putting out fires. So I wanted to teach people how to have that kind of freedom in their business um, and enjoy it and be massively successful at the same time, because that's the trick. There's a lot of people who are doing their own business, but they make success and they don't, or they spend too much on one side or the other, as you know very well, that schedule, that, that time that you try to build uh, to have that balance is, is a real juggling act. You know, It can be very tricky if you don't have the right guidance. So that really kind of brought me up to where I'm at now. Now I'm coaching. I built an academy, the ETOP Academy. I have a podcast, and I'm really helping people overcome all those kind of shackled issues to their business and really help them enjoy what they're doing, help a lot of people, and enjoy the freedom at the same time. Great. So the first thing that comes to mind is, well, what would you tell people who think that they've got it? They're saying, well, I've got to put the work into my business now, or I've got to put the work into my nine to five now, and then I'll get to enjoy 
all the stuff that you talked about later. I'll get to be present in my children's lives. I'll get to enjoy the fruits of my labor. But, you know, I've got to put in the work now. What would you say to those people? Well, I think that goes along the same lines. People say, I'll be healthy later. I have to work too much. I don't have time to eat well. I don't have time to work out, right? And 25 years goes by. Now they're sick and all that money they made because they were so busy, they spend it trying to get healthy, right? So you've got that. So what it is really is a priority that you can you can do it now. There isn't waiting. We're all going to work. This isn't like I wave a magic wand and I have a magical business, you know, I, I, I try not, I always try to tell people that up front, this is still work, but the work is focused differently. That's what it is. You understand delegation, you understand elimination, you understand the things that have to be put in place and you're able to prioritize those so that your business from the get-go starts to be self-supporting. See, the problem is people think they have to work, 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 and then they'll do all that later. Well, why wait? Right. You need to start with that focus. Now, yes, you can say you don't have money, don't have this, but you also don't have a reason to. If I know I need to get an office manager first thing or a virtual assistant, I'm going to focus on earning that earning that income that I can get that person because that time then frees me up more, right? So that's what we're looking to do. And that's why you can't say, I'll do it later. Okay. And so how has that principle, how did you apply that? Um, certainly you've applied it in your business. How did you apply that in your life because you know in life you might not be able to delegate everything to a personal assistant or you know whatever so how do you sort of prioritize in your life what does that look like well you're back to working with the team okay you now i have six kids and a wife okay and we've nicknamed her the commandant okay because <laughs> because she runs the house okay i mean she homeschools she teaches our kids. She does this stuff, right? So, but she's also, in my case, I'm very fortunate. She's a master scheduler, mm-hmm. right? The, the woman can plan, all right? So we have to be a team, though. I have to work on this, all right? So kids have to go somewhere. We need this time. I help on certain parts of the homeschooling. Whatever the case is, we have to, we have to be on the same page of communication. Because if you're not, I might be going this way. She's going that way. The kids want to go this way. And it's a giant mess. And we've learned to kind of work that together and figure out what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and create the schedule. I think schedule, we've talked before when you were on my podcast, the importance of scheduling, you know, and and I don't think it can be undervalued. You know, we all feel like we're an entrepreneur and we like to do things on the fly. And I get it. I'm a very creative guy. I'm an artist. And I like to do that, too. Usually ends in failure. (laughs) Just Because you'll do things, but you won't do the important things. Because oh, yeah. you're, you know you're going to be drawn to the easy stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It, what, what is your trick for the scheduling? So I'll tell you mine. What I've had to do as of late is when I set time to do something, I make sure that there are no other distractions. So I've started doing this thing where my phone is in the other room. So if it's not email time, I don't care if something pops up on my computer screen, the Apple Watch, the phone, it's none of that. It's just really devoted to specifically what it is I have you know, to do. And then I find that the productivity goes up and um, also just the quality of whatever it is that I'm doing you know, is, is going up astronomically. W- what do you do? Similar, I'm, I'm like you, I don't, and I'm making a guess here, okay? I don't think you're really a multitasker, right? No. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Are there any so of us the... multitaskers? I know we think well, we are. Uh, People think they are, and people attempt it. I think it's a terrible thing to be, and I never want that label, okay? People know that you give me one thing, I focus, I do the best that I can do on that one thing, then I'm able to move on. So just like you, same thing, I put the distractions down. If I check my emails twice a day or a third time, you know, morning, noon, night, done, okay? I mean, email now, would, or whatever, 20 years ago, that was like really important. Now it's like email is the is snail mail now. That's the new snail mail, right? Now you got text and instant messenger and, and messenger, whatever. And so people have this kind of priority, you know, get back to me sooner level, but email doesn't seem to be that priority right. anymore, you know? So yes, I put that aside. I'm very, I'm very focused on the things I do one thing at a time. If I'm writing, can't be bothered. Again, I don't have that like you. I don't have the phone. I write, I get it done. I move on. I have to shoot a video. I shoot video. I get it done. If I have to do coaching calls, obviously I get on a coaching call and I handle the coaching call. If it's a group, I'm totally focused on that. So very similar. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so 
tell me um, in terms of the scheduling? So obviously your business is a priority, um, the family's a priority. What do you do for yourself that you put into the schedule here that ultimately makes you better in your business and better at home? What's your secret sauce if there is one? Mine is, is you know, our magic time. And that mine's like 4.30 a.m. to about 7, 7.30 a.m. That's my magic time. I do an hour of Bible study when I first get up, you know, prep for my day, um, any additional reading. I kind of do, you know, any fine tuning of the schedule. I spend that time when there's no interruptions, no one's up in the house um, and I get a lot done. You know, I've always been, I've always been that way. I've always been that morning person who gets more done by eight o'clock than most people do all day, you know, but it's uninter uninterrupted. See, no one's sending me stuff. No one's looking for my time. No one's calling me at 4.30 in the morning. They're sleeping. I'm getting work done. So that's how I've kind of, that's been my, my magical mastery sauce. That, I'm telling you, that is the secret. And so many people say that, you know, they're tired. They don't want to get up. You know, they want to sleep in. But there is nothing like the work that you're going to be able to complete uninterrupted for that magic time, as you call it, in the morning. I mean, with my kids, it's just like, as soon as they get up, they are on. You know, it's like, where is breakfast and where is this and where is that and help me with the homeschool. But it, but that, that 4.30 to seven o'clock time for me is magic. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think people can't, I can't I, And it's quiet, not like this time of year is dark, dark, dark. You know what I mean? But like the whole time, so it's like everybody's sleeping. I'm like, this is the best. I mean, just I can hear the refrigerator motor going off, right? <laughs> Tell me how many times you've heard your refrigerator motor going off. That's when yeah. it's quiet. I'm sitting in the kitchen working. And I'm, I, hear this. I go, yeah, this is you know, this, <laughs> that's the only interruption. A little fan, you know, on the on the, on the fridge. Yeah, and, and you just talked about just now in the morning that you set aside some time for your Bible study. So I, I know that everybody listening that might not be their thing. But, right. you know, what does that time do for you? Like for me, it's, and we talked about this on your show, it's meditation time for me. But that quiet, right. that one time with me and whatever is the best. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's important, you know, because it's, it's reflect. People can do their, you know, they do gratitude stuff. They, people do a lot of things. I, I'm, you know, I, I do what I do, you do what you do. It's all, I don't, right. it doesn't bother me. But what that does for me, it gives me a new focus on the day, it helps me put priorities in place. You know, it reminds me of where I am, what I'm doing, why it's for, you know, why why I'm here and what, you know, that kind of stuff is very, very, the spiritual aspect for me is very, very strong. Um, it's, a, it's a real motivator for me. It's kind of what helped me really recover from that stuff in 08, 09, you know, and, and get over things and start realizing where my identity lies and everything else. So it's a daily reminder. I do that seven days a week. So it's 4.30, seven days a week. You know, I don't, I don't take weekends off. I don't sleep in. I don't do any of that stuff because I'm a little odd, but that's just where I'm at. And that's how I get things done. So, um, yeah, it's daily, every single day. Yeah. And do you find that it's a nice reset from whatever happened the day before? Do you, do you find that for you? I do. I do because, again, we're in the morning, right? So nothing's happened except what we're creating. But then, as you know, by the time you hit 5 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., I go to bed at 9, 9.01 maybe at the latest. But, you know, I'm in bed then. Yeah, a lot has happened, you know, and I sleep well. My, I'm, I don't even know hitting the pillow. I'm asleep and it's good. But, yeah, and all of a sudden you get to re that's part of the review in the morning. You know, you have to go over those things from yesterday. How do you adjust? How do you how do you adapt to those? You know, and it's yeah. keeping things in that perspective and that order that helps you kind of address those things in a in a in a productive way. No, I, I, I absolutely love that. Um, I'm, I'm the same way. And so then you just talked about, um, you know, the issue in 08 and 09 and, and sort of everything that happened and how your business shifted. And um, what really oh, it disappeared, it, it, it disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but what really what really stuck out for me was that you said that your special time in the morning, your magic time in the morning has allowed you to figure out a, a new sense of your identity and like where that lied. And I love that. That was really a powerful statement that you made. Would, would you speak to that? And again, I know the identity portion will be different for everybody. Everyone has their own feelings on it. But how do you feel about that? Because we're, we're in a world where it's like productivity and we are as good as what we can produce and as good as what people think about us and as good as all these things. But what does this mean to you? Well, 
Yeah, my issue was you'd never see me without my work shirt on, okay, a logo. I was Rick Rock. I was in my business. I was Rick Rock. Right. I mean, that was, I mean, if you, every truck, everything was wrapped, everything was, everything was everything. It's just, that was me. Okay. I'm a, I'm a steel sculptor. I'm a, you know, internationally recognized steel sculptor and I'm this and I'm, all that stuff was who I was. Right. Which is a really bad thing to be, you know, because you get caught up in that. Again, I worked 18, 19, 20 years at a business developing everything I did. And now here I am, everything is going away like overnight. And I'm thinking I'm, there's nothing left of me. I don't have anything, you know, this, this was me. And again, I go back to my kids who literally would chase me down the driveway as I left, like crying. Okay. I'm, like, I'm looking in the rear view mirror, I'm like, man, you know, people used to have like a dog run after them. I had like four kids, five kids, you know, going down and I come home and they'd attack me when I walk in the door. And, and that again, my identity was in work and thinking, man, if I'm not this, you know, I'm nothing. I don't have anything. I spent all this time. I have all this investment. And to me, I, I came to the realization that that's not who I am. You know, the business, business can come and go. You know, being a father, you know, being a husband, uh, raising good kids, right? Kids with character and morals and having this upbringing that they can then contribute to society. You know, that was a bigger mission for me. You know, my identity wasn't that. And for me, my identity is in Christ. Okay. So as, as far as from a spiritual standpoint, that's where my identity is. So my identity lies in that, in him. And that way, nothing can affect it here in the world. Okay. That's just straight up how I am. So um, that was a huge epiphany for me. Huge epiphany that really helped me let go and again, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit on the extreme side. When I let go, it means let go, sell everything, get rid of everything. I haven't, I haven't made a sculpture in 11 years. Mm. You know, I mean, I, when I stop, I stop. So maybe I'll get back to it someday, <laughs> but that was my identity issue. Yeah. And so how do you parse someone who, so some of these people are business owners. So if you, if you're want to be wanting to be a successful business owner, or if you just want to be successful in whatever career you're in, right? But then you're trying to like parse that with not letting it consume you to the point that it's your identity. How, like, how would you do that? And what advice would you give someone who's just starting out to sort of? I think, I think what you have to do, um, and it kind of goes back to my ETOP stuff, my escape to owner prison stuff. When you lay out the plan, like say you want, you want to be a startup, right? You got an idea for a business, you want to do it. And you're going to be super motivated, right? No one's more more motivated than the beginning, right? They're extremely there. They want to get this going. They want to get off the ground. Um, again, it comes down to some of the planning and how you're going to build this business. You know, it's taking time to go from the concept to the creation. That's one of my first levels in my academy. You got to go, what is it? How, there's a lot of steps to it and figure out how you're going to do this, right? And understanding the correct way to build a business. Because if you're new at business, it's your first business, Trust me, you don't know much. Okay, no matter what you've done in the corporate world or whatever, you're gonna you're in for some serious learning, right? So there's two things: the planning is part of it, right, and understanding that. But you should be getting help. You should be getting a coach, right? Finding a good business coach, finding someone who's been where you want to go, that can help you. This is something I did not do. I was not into anybody helping me at all, no matter what. The answer was always no. Okay, dumbest thing ever. Don't ever be that way. Okay, you always want to get help. You want to find those who have been there, have them help you. And again, some guys have made massive success. This is an important point here. Some guys have made massive success, but their personal life is in shambles. Mm -hmm. So you need to know who you're following. Don't just go by the appearance of I've, I've made six, seven figure businesses, nine figure businesses and all this. Well, OK, but what about the rest of your life? Tell me about that. Right. You know, where's that at? Because you're going to model yourself after something. They can take you down the wrong road. Yeah, you'll make money. You'll have a successful business. But just like you're saying, you're going to end up you're going to failing on two thirds of your life. You know, mm -hmm. successful business and misery everywhere else you go. So you want to avoid that. Yeah. No, does that make sense? I, no, for me, it does. Absolutely. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Because I think like when I first started out in business and I've had several businesses and have exited and been successful, but you know what? My current business is the best ever. And it's because it's the first time that I have had help in all facets. So it's like I run the front of the ship. You know, I'm the sort of the, the person who comes up with the ideas and I run the front of it. But when we're talking about other things, I parse out those jobs to other people who 
have expertise in those areas, then I don't get bogged down with it. Um, but because I, you know, I'm I'm all about exactly what you're saying. So, tell me about this idea of finding a mentor, because we've all heard that. Those who have been in college or been in the military or whatever, we've all heard the mentor thing forever. And I hear a lot of people tell me, well, you know, like, where would I find the mentor? Nobody really wants to talk. You know, how do I, how do, I do that? What, what would you say to those people? So I always do, I always give the two differences between mentor and coach. Okay. Because okay? I always ask people, because they don't, they think they're the same and they're not. Mm -hmm. Okay. A mentor to me is someone who's going to give freely, right? They're going to be someone with an expertise who has wisdom and they're willing to, help you okay, let's call them an advisor right a board of advisory maybe you got a couple friends who are in business obviously they've achieved more than you but you want to be there so you would go to them they want to give you some pointers okay so it's on a little bit a little bit lighter level let's say right they're going to say hey well i wouldn't do that i did this you might want to try this uh maybe they're helping some kids right some teenagers who are looking to do business and you're going to give them some help you know that's a mentor you know that's more philanthropy if you will Right. You're helping to help so you can help people get into the small business and all that. That's good. A coach, I put them on the payroll. Right. The coach now is someone who has a, has a very, very vested interest in your results, in your success. Right. Because you're going to pay them. They're going to give you a detailed roadmap where a mentor is going to give you, again, advice. You know, they're going to put the armor on you. They're going to encourage you. They're going to keep you going. A coach is going to have programs. They're going to have accountability. They're going to have things that are going to hold your feet to the fire to get things done. They're going to move your business along much faster than a mentor would. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you can have both, you know, it's definitely okay to have both. But like you said, it's going to be more difficult finding a mentor than it is a coach with social media and everything else. Now you can find coaches. Uh, there's a lot of coaching platforms out there, a lot of coaching programs. Uh, I have one, you have one. We all have, you know, we're all coaches, right? There's some right. great coaches and there's some rotten coaches. You know, there's some people, you know, they've, they're coaching something they've never done. Okay. So that makes it kind of difficult, but they, they're out there like anything, you know, there's bad doctors, there's good doctors, there's whatever, they're all, they're all out there. You know, as they say, what do they call the guy who graduates class in medical class? Doctor. Okay. So, you know, that's where it's at. So that, that's kind of what I see there. I would recommend they, you have to get into your niche. Whatever your niche is for business, if you're a fitness person, get in the fitness. If you're a business, start looking at business. You know, whatever it is, start looking for that. And these these coach, especially with social media, maybe these days you could just start saying coach a few times and your phone will pick it up. And next thing you know, you have five ads for coaches because that's how it works yeah. now. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So if someone was saying, so I, I get this question and I'll, I'll pose it to you. So if, if someone wanted you to be their mentor, not their coach, their mentor, what would be the easiest way for them to spark your interest? Because I think lots of people go about this the wrong way. Yeah, you know, um, flattery works pretty well. You know, so you <laughs> might want to lead them a little bit of flattery, a little bit of respect. You know what I mean? Like, you know how you, if you want to get someone's attention, you know, jumping up and down doesn't do it, but say, I really respect so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so. you've done this and this I've noticed. And I, I just find that fascinating. I would recommend if you're going to, if you're going to approach someone who you want to be their mentor is you need to start by being inquisitive, you know, asking questions. Don't ask, don't come out and say, Hey man, can you help just, what do you do with something like this? And then get an answer. Because believe me, mentors, entrepreneurs, we do want to share. We love to help. We love to, we love to see other people start a business, grow a business. I mean, at least I do and anyone I know in business. Anyone who's achieved will never tell you not to achieve. Okay, they're going to encourage you to climb that ladder. You know, so I would start by asking questions. You know, sparking their interest, showing an interest in, if it's business, showing an interest in that with them. Share stories. You know, don't come out and say, I need help. I, can you, do you just, again, asking for help is one thing. Begging for help is not a good thing. Yeah. Okay. So you just, you, okay. it's rapport, right? It's building a relationship. So you have to create a relationship with that person because someone's not going to come in and mentor you or who doesn't know you. They got to know you. They got to like you. They don't like you. They're not going to help you. Right. I mean, that's kind of the way the world works. Right. No, absolutely. And having some knowledge about what it is they do, do a little bit of research 
before you're automatic, you know, trying to have a conversation with someone, you don't have enough juice, <laughs> right, to have the conversation. Right. Um, okay, so now we're getting here into to 2021, and as the whole New Year's resolution thing goes, everyone's starting to define new goals for the new year. And, you know, how do you do that in life and in business and ensure that you're actually attaining and, and achieving those goals? Because so often we start out with goals and they fall flat before we can even make it to February. Like, what do you do? Yeah, I had to make them really short. I had to make really, really short term goals. I mean, I'm no different than anyone else. I'm not some super goal achiever that, you know, I plan to see out for five years. And I'm going to hit it on, you know, four years, 11 and a half months. I'm going to hit it. You know, man, I'm not, I'm not that guy. Okay. So I have to, I, I, I have a lot of vision. I know where I want to go with my things, but I can't, I can lay that out. Here's my end goal, but then I have to break it down into really small 30 day bites. You know, I have to get the, in 14 days, this, in 30 days, this, what does it look like? What does achieving that goal look like? If I can break it down to those steps, I have a much better understanding of what it's going to really take for one, which makes it more obtainable for me. Because just to say, I, you know, the, the old, I want to make a million dollars. Okay. Dumbest goal ever. All right. But it's, it's like that, that has no meaning. Everyone wants a million dollars. You know, how do you get there? How much is that? How much money is that every day that I have to make? Two thousand three hundred. You know, you got to know exactly how much money every day you have to make to make a million dollars, right? So you got to bring it. How am I going to make you know twenty four hundred bucks every day from now until you know next January? You know, how am I going to do this? So I have to look at exactly what's going on, you know, and so I got to break it down to those weeks and months. That's the only way I can do it because otherwise, never make it. You know, yeah. I just I. That it just you don't it's it's too far. You can't stay focused on one thing for a year yeah. with life because life just is there and it's in the way. And, and it has to be something that you can measure to see if you are attaining the goal, and so then you can hold yourself a, a, accountable. Um, are, are you good with self accountability, or is it that when you bring in sort of the the other folks in your life that sort of help you with that? I I, I need help like anyone else. I, I mean, I'm real good. I can set goals and I can get after them again, especially if they're shorter. I can, I can achieve things, you know, I can be driven and achieve them. But when you start getting diff, when you're dreaming big and you're setting big goals, yeah, you don't usually do that on your own. You know, you got to bring in the team, right? You want to compress time. You want to get knowledge to get you there faster. You got bigger hurdles to climb. It always helps you to get another hand to pull you up. You know, so you definitely don't want to, you don't want to discount anyone so you can beat your chest and say, I did this all on my own. Okay. It's not even, I used to think that was the way to go. I built this whole business all by myself and then look what happened. Right. <laughs> cause, Cause I wouldn't listen to anyone. So you really don't, again, always don't be afraid of getting that accountability and that help. It's important. Yeah. Yeah. And like you just said, everyone needs it. Everyone needs it. And you should constantly be striving to get to another level and another level and another level. And I always say, I don't know what the saying is, but I always say, if I'm the smartest person in the room, we've got a problem. I like to be surrounded by you know, people who know more than me because I want to be doing different things and higher level things I've been doing. So all, all about that. I, I think when you look at the high, high achievers, I mean, people have really made it. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They're still going to another level. Oh, yeah. They are never done. You know, so you can't, you, you want a million dollars, he's got a billion. Okay, <laughs> guess what? Right. He's looking for another billion. Okay. I mean, they're, they're not done. Okay. That's not, and it's again, that's not money. I just use that as an example, but there, there are things to achieve in our life, you know, beyond business, right? Beyond money. There's so many levels in our life and you, you're the expert at this, you know, from relationship aspects, from, from these goals, from just all, when you put all that stuff together and achieving these levels in life of creating peace in your life, creating the balance in your life. Okay. Those take, those going to get, take additional experts too, right? They're going to, you got to learn how to do that because we just don't know. It's, you just, but that's part of the journey. That's what's fun is the learning aspect. Right. Right. So what do you do about um, being able to sort of let go? So to take in the lessons that you've learned, for example, 08 and 09, so I'm sure you've learned lots of lessons from that, to take them, okay, here's what I've learned, and then be able to release it and say, okay, here's what I'm gonna apply next, but I'm not gonna beat myself up about the seeming failure. Right, I learned, 
a number of years ago, uh, just that, you know, it's like I can put everything I have into it. Okay. I always try to do my best, right? I'm, I'm about being exceptional. Okay. I won't, you know, see my shirt says we outwork your talent every day. Okay. So you can have talent. I'm a worker. Okay. I'm yeah, just going to yeah. uh, work you into the dirt. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get what I want to get. But at the same time, I learned you have to hold things with an open hand. If you're clutching out of that business, like it's everything and it's only that, okay, no one can take it away, but you also can't release it for other things to come in. So it's that open hand principle. Mm. You know, for me, if God wants to take something on my hand and put it back in, outstanding. He's going to give me a new opportunity, right? So I had to learn just like, it's okay. You know, I'm going to do everything I can. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, there's the things that are in my control. Now you have to work. Work is a big part of this. You know, you got to do the work part. But at the same time, you can't, again, you can't, you can't create your identity into this thing. And if it fails, I'm a loser. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's what you have to be okay with. You know, it's, it's that gamble. It's that calculated risk and that all risk doesn't have reward. You know, I mean, sometimes it, if you take it, it doesn't work out, you know, but you're not done. You know, you right. still got to keep digging. You still got to work. So that's that's what I've done. It's just really the open hand kind of principle for me. I like that. And it, it's making me chuckle a little bit because I feel like there are two very extreme sides of the spectrum. There's like where you were before and the people, and we've all been there. I've been there where you're sort of like clutching everything with a hand, right? And then there's the other end of the spectrum where people kind of forget about the work hard part and they're just sort of like, it'll come or whatever. And there's not enough of us who are in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, there's not enough right. of us who are in the middle, so that's that's good. Um, so tell me about your home life. So you've got your kids and you've got your wife, and so how do you make that thrive while still chugging along with all the other good stuff you've got going on with your business and, and achievements? What's the balancing act? For us, I mean, we and when my we was my wife and I were married five years before we started having kids, you know. So I was an old dad. 39 when I had my first you know, child. Uh, but so that gave me a lot of wisdom there. But the homeschooling aspect for us, okay, we were planning for all these. We're going to do it from the get-go, right? So having that because there's a freedom there of your schedule and planning that you don't have in, say, a public school setting where they're stuck in this time, these weeks, these days. We don't have that. You know, we have three hours a day of school and we're done. You know, so we, we could travel. We could do whatever we wanted. So that was a big part of what made everything manageable, mm. you know? So it, it is very interesting. And our house is a gathering place. Now we have six kids. So if just each kid brings over one friend, then we have 12 children in the house, okay? And they, they have more than just one friend. So there'll be 15, 20 kids at a time in our house, oh. okay? And, and, I, and yeah, people, I'm like, it's the greatest thing ever. I take pictures, all the shoes by the front door, there's like 30 pairs of shoes. It's, I go, that's a picture of love right there. It's I the like greatest it. thing ever. I just, yeah. I, I go, there's going to be a day when those shoes aren't there. It's going to be my wife's and my shoes. And she'll still oh. tell me I have too many pairs of shoes out, you know, but, it, but I'm like, so I, that's how I did it. You know, it's really balancing that for me was that enable us to have the schedule to fit things in and yeah. make them work as a family. Now, there are people who are listening to this now who are undoubtedly laughing because we have all, even those of us who did not choose to go walk into this homeschooling thing have been thrust into it in the year of the pandemic. Right. And we're like, I don't know about that freedom. But, but I think probably in your case, it may be easier because you and, and your wife are sort of balancing the schedule of the teaching. It has to right. be because it's not a walk in the park. No, no, it's tough. And my, and, hey, my wife does most of it, okay? I'm like art and PE. Okay, I mean that's what I do. Okay, so, um, um, my kids are smart. It's not because of me. That's all I'm going to tell you, you know. But but it is it is different because you know my the day day we well I have three adopted children, three adopted siblings, and three biological. Um, but the day that we got D'Angelo, he's my oldest. That we he got him, we got him at birth like the day after he was born. Uh, when he came in the house, she stopped working. So she was at a Chicago Board of Trade, and she worked all day. It was really good. She stopped where it hasn't worked since. She's raised the family. So that's a that's a decision we had to make. Yeah. You know, what that role, but she thrives in that role. That's, you know, great. that's what she wants to do. So again, that's that's part of the balance, you know. So I'm I'm very fortunate to have her as part of the team. Yeah. All the other lesson, choose your partners wisely to the people listening. No, yes. that's that that's great. So what 
Can we, where can we find out more information about you and what you're doing and what kind of cool things do you have coming up in this new year for those who want to know more about Richard Walsh? Yeah, you can always go to escapetheownerprison.com. That's the website. Uh, find me on Facebook. That's my primary social media platform at this time. Uh, Richard Walsh on Facebook, you'll find it. Uh, I have you know private groups and all kinds of, I have my academy. I got my ETOP podcast. Uh, a lot of things you can get into. I'll give you those links and stuff. You can have those. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just find me and listen to my, my podcasts are great. I had you on as a guest, one of my best guests ever. Oh, so nice. Best, but it was, no, but it was just, it's so good to be doing that. And that's again where you learn, right? So I try to just bring a lot of value to my, to, to my listeners. Uh, people follow me, of course, my coaching programs and things like that too. My ETOP Academy. Uh, those are the kind of places where you can get a hold of me. You bet. Yeah, well, great. I really appreciate having you on, and I'm sure we'll hear from you again, but thanks so much. Absolutely. I love it. Thanks for having me on. Okay. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, there you go. I hope you found that information very useful and applicable to your life today. Richard is an amazing guest. If you'd like more information on these topics, you can find us at maxingu.com and also on IG at maxing underscore you. I'll see you there.